Orb presents The Family That Slays Together, Stays Together, Part 2. This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. And the, the end of Season 3 is upon us. It is here. Get ready for changes. Cha-cha-cha changes, even though we're bowie Repeat bowie <laughs> uh, this is a direct continuation of the last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so also written by Doc Hammer and Jackson Public together and aired on August 24th, 2008. Yes. Um, this is, uh, you know, the assassins have all been dealt with. The OSI and the Monarch's men are all converging on Brock and the Venture family. Yes. Uh, kind of leading to this uh Uh, Kind of the biggest status quo change uh, that we've seen so far. I'd probably say the biggest reset that the series gets, um, especially um, before the all that in Gargantua 2, right? Yeah. But I mean, I I would call that one the biggest one. Yeah. This is kind of presaging that. Yeah. Uh, And this is, uh, you know, the things that happen here are crazy. Uh, (laughs) Death of, you know, so the death of 24. Mm-hmm. which we'll, we'll talk about. It happens at the very end of this. Um, this started as Doc Hammer being uh, an imp, a smiling imp emoji. Mm-hmm. Um, just like, <laughs> dude, let's do this. Uh, like, <laughs> real beef some butthead energy yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, um, I, and I like how they admit that it never felt like a good idea. Like, it, it was just, hey, wouldn't it be funny if, and then they just kept on working on it, uh, and then they committed to it, and then it's like, well, fuck. Uh, and the yeah. comment and the commentary, they're still real, uh, kind of like they, 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 they're kind of little over their skis about it. In the art book, when they've had, you know, when they've had several seasons, you know, a few more seasons under their belts, kind of like think about it. They 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 talk about like ultimately it was a really good thing to do because it you know it let let them develop twenty one into a more interesting character as opposed to being just a, a kind of a comic relief. Uh, standing off to the sidelines, uh, you know, commenting on things that are happening, um, and also, you know, relatively unique in the world of like genre fiction, where you know somebody goes from being part of a comic duo to being kind of a more serious, uh, kind of like main character in their own right. Yeah, yeah, uh, which I, you know, I think that they probably could have done with with 24 around. Yeah. Like I liked this arc, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it it does, you get the sense that like Jackson specifically never really knew why he was doing it. (laughs) You know, like doc just kind of like kept talking him into it and he's like, yeah, sure. And that's so (laughs) like, even in the book when they've had seasons to reflect or like, Oh, I guess that's stupid enough to work. (laughs) You know, (laughs) it's kind of their response. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, very funny. Uh, The other, the, uh, the second really big thing, that happens in this is the uh, destruction of the illegal clone farm. Uh, so the boys no longer have backups. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a great move. Yes. Uh, for the, uh, Doc Hammer said that, you know, Hey, we have to end this storyline. The boys can't have a safety met- net if we want them to grow and develop. Right. You know, cause like, uh, that's, yeah. that's exactly what happens. <laughs> you, you know, like, like part of it, they, they've basically been in the stasis loop for three years. They should be 19, yeah. but they've been 16 for, they've been 16 for way too long. Um, and that, that, like that, that is, you know, I think that one of the best moves that they could have made because the characters that Dean and Hank turn into are incredibly interesting and fun. Well, it's also, uh, a big thing that, diff- that I think is special about the show. Yes. You know, uh, an early thing that signaled to me that this was not going to be just like a regular adult swim cartoon. Mm-hmm. The fact that the status quo changes pretty consistently. Yeah. Uh, in this, that's something I really respect about it. Even, even though, like in the grand scheme of things, th- like that didn't need to happen based on the way things go. Kind of because this is a it's a pretty sloppy episode. It's big, but yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something controversial. Like I love both of these creators, but when you see the split, uh huh, and you see uh, that you know then talk about what they worked on, like this is a lot of Doc Hammer stuff, and Doc Hammer mm-hmm. is not, I think, as tight. Yeah. You more, you know, and that that's the the price of ambition, right? Mm-hmm. Like you want to do neater stuff, like you're maybe going to your reach is going to exceed your grasp, and I respect yeah. that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh it's a really sloppy episode though. <laughs> um like I I like the first half of the finale of this much better. Yeah. Like I like what this does very mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Um it's a little light on jokes. Yeah. Uh and and sequences I really love, mm-hmm. and it also just feels like it's all over the place. Like they tried to do too much. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, and like they're introducing elements here at this point. Like this is, you know, where we get, this is where we get general Traster, Right. Yes. Um, and kind of yeah. showing us, uh, you know, the way that Doe and Car- Cardholder uh, interact with this upper echelon and leadership of OSI. Um, you know, not seeing so much of their of of, of their motion, but like you know, of of their um, uh, like inner workings, but like actually seeing that oh, they have like an army at their disposal, not just like these agents or what have you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. The final thing that this does that really changes things up is Brock quitting uh, his job with the OSI and consequently not lo- no longer being the bodyguard to the Ventures. Mm-hmm. Um, he was part of the family, but this is enough to get him fed up. Uh, yes. He does get drawn back in, um, but this introduces my favorite Brock arc mm-hmm. um, of my favorite season, you know, season four with all of the Sphinx. Yeah, Sphinx uh, stuff. Sphinx, I Sphinx. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I love it. Like that's my favorite stuff that the show does. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as much as I, you know, when I remember when I first saw this, I was like, Oh no, like, like, are they literally writing off Brock? Yeah. You know, uh, they are not. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, like th- it, that felt reasonable at the time because of, uh, because of Patrick Warburton, you could kind of mm-hmm. see, you, you, you kind of could get the sense that like, maybe he was, you know, going to become a regular on a sitcom and he, you know, just kind of got too, you know, would have been too big for it. No, not necessarily the case. So that is, yeah. that, that is good. The Brock sticks around and continues getting good stuff to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so let's get into it. Let's do, uh, we open up, we have Doe and card holder going in and talking to the leader, uh, of the OSI, uh, general Traster, uh, uh, ably, and if I don't say stellarly performed by Toby Huss, uh, one of the greatest I, maniacs I mean, in all of acting uh, and all of voice yes, acting. It's so good. He's just doing Cotton Hill. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, but it's a good voice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Traster is their version of, uh, General Thunderbolt Ross. You know, reporting a little, like, for duty in there. yeah but basically well hey if you want, like you, you got to do a lot of stuff cold before i start calling you thunderbolt yeah i, I don't want to say that you're the opposite of a thunderbolt right now <laughs> you're not not the opposite of a thunderbolt okay. I, I have no idea who thunderbolt ross is so uh he is the hulk's father-in-law basically okay. he's a okay. girlfriend's dad uh, oh, he's a general william he's hurt general. in that one movie yeah yeah okay there yeah. we go yeah yeah uh william hurt in that and black widow hmm. um so the uh yeah and that's basically what this is but then they added a bunch of fd or uh teddy roosevelt to it of course because that's yeah. good and they gave him an yeah. iron man heart <laughs> yeah i and later he's a hulk i admit it i'm a hulk um, yeah i i love this character and this voice performance so fucking much yep <laughs> um they're reporting on Brock. They're like, Hey, you have turned this OSI, you know, list of assassins into the obituary page. Mm-hmm. Um, and they do, uh, you know, they go through all the people who are dead, all the assassins, uh, with little, little commentary, pithy commentary about how they're dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, Hey, you know, we haven't really learned precisely about Latour, uh, presumed dead. He's not answering his cell phone. If you knew him, you'd understand. <laughs> yeah. That's really like... funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh man! And, you know, Tracer comes out. He's like, "I will, you know, oversee this operation to end this Brock problem once and for all." This is a this is a fake out. Yes, you know what what's actually happening here. He marches out of the office and is like, "Oh, I better get dressed." And we get our credits. Yeah, um, cutting over one one of my favorite scenes <laughs> uh, in the episode. Um, you know, in the last episode, they just got arrested mm-hmm. uh, in the hotel where they fought Latour. Here, they are uh, being inter- uh, interrogated. Interrogated. Yes. Rather. Um, Brock has been arrested. He's in a jumpsuit. He's being interrogated by two FBI agents, uh, Sergeant Collar and Detective Heat. That's so good. Such good names. <laughs> yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they're trying to, trying to give, you know, Brock the business and Brock is, you know, unflappable. And so you're looking at life plus 20 Tralfaz, his, uh, his, his fake last name, Jesus Tralfaz. Uh, aluminum signing dealer uh also mm-hmm. Tralfaz, uh i was trying to look this up because i was like where, why are they talking because i forgot that it was a re- that was his original name and i was just like i was just doing a search like what reference is that um yeah. Tr- Tr- Tralfaz is uh at like it was astro's original name on the jetsons the dog makes no sense it may, yeah uh like apparently he belonged to, like a rich guy and the only other thing i could see which was like that's really tenuous but also it's one of those urban dictionary uh definitions that you know is very uncredible cool. 
Yeah. A disparaging nickname for Elvis Presley. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, like maybe like it's, oh. is it his hair? Like what is, Yeah. what are you talking about? I don't, I, I don't know why they chose that. That's, that's real, real it, weird. Yeah. All I know is he loves the history channel. <laughs> um, and you know, another thing that confused me, Brock says, oh, it's Spanish for go fuck yourself. He's, he's just, he's just goading them on. Uh, and, and Rusty is trying to bail on Brock saying like, hey, I'm not really with this guy. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and the 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 uh, the agent FBI agent slaps him anyway. You know, a great uh, you know, great little callback to that later. Um, <laughs> Hank and Dean are in another room where Dean is just crying and confessing everything uh-huh. while the therapist is telling them they're not under arrest. Yeah, um, well, there's like you know when they, when they cut to him, he's got red, red around his mouth. You're thinking, oh my god, they're beating up this 16 year old kid. No, there's red around his mouth because they've got a bowl of Twizzlers in front of him. Yeah, they got the Twizzlers. <laughs> Uh, and the, the counselor is like, oh, so this Brock, you see him? You know, does uh-huh. he ever talk to you? Like, basically, you know, their their lives are pretty unbelievable. Uh-huh. Um, Brock and Helper are delusions, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, when they mention Helper, they cut to Helper, who is uh, being tortured in a chair. <laughs> um, the, the monarch's men splash him with a bucket, and the monarch is demanding to know where Dr. Venture is. Mm-hmm. And he just keeps going, beep, 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 you know, doing <laughs> Helper stuff. Nobody can understand him, and the 21 and 24 are just guessing. Like, I think he's being sarcastic. You can tell because the upwards inflection. <laughs> but, like, if the information was there, it wouldn't matter if he's being sarcastic. Right. Like, this is just them being fucking dumbasses. Yeah. <laughs> trying you know? to, to, try really to interrogate this nonverbal robot. Very funny. Oh, God. I, find, I, I, love, I love Helper. I, I love Helper because I love Beaker, is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. He's, he's cuter than same. Beaker. Yeah. Like, Beaker. Like, Beaker wouldn't take a pet. Like he's some kind of creature. He's not a human. But if you tried to pet Beaker, he'd be like, oh, oh, no, he'd try to run away. He'd run away. Yeah, yeah. But but Helper would. Like Helper's Helper a, gives hugs and stuff. Yeah, Helper loves her. He's a hugger. You. Yeah, Helper's yeah, it's nurturing. Like a you know, friendly Beaker. Like the thing about Beaker is that he's like frigid. I will I will not hear you talk shit about Beaker on this network. Tell me I'm wrong. Is he is he not frigid? Can you imagine what it's would you an, do with it's Beaker? A, it's a you would, would say one thing to him you would, and he'd run away. You would try and calm him down. It's like approaching a deer out in the meadow. No, okay. Never calmed him down. It's got one personality trait. It's <laughs> you like, want a project. He's like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> like Cole, you can't just keep trying to fix broken birds. <laughs> like okay, let's side podcast. I'm gonna teach you about codependency. <laughs> All the, all that I'm saying is I've got something he needs and he's got something I need. Okay. And that just because he's in prison on death row doesn't mean he doesn't need loving. Um, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I uh, to me this is the platonic. I would like to see Beaker evolve into Helper in like yes. a Pokemon or Digimon kind of way. Yeah, but uh, the, the, they're in the same zip code, and uh, I, yes. I, I just the, that unlocked something for me when I was thinking about Helper and Beaker. You one hundred percent said it on the show before. Have I? Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> like that comparison, I think is in like episode one. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so twenty one uh, is trying to roughhouse Helper, knocks his head off, and he's like, "Oh geez, you know, oh geez, <laughs> sorry," and puts man. it back on. Yeah. Uh, cute. Uh, come back to Brock and Rusty. Uh, one of the detectives uh, says, you must be a bowler because you really did a 7-10 split mm-hmm. with Latour. Um, the uh, Brock, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, he's like, oh, that's a little esoteric. And Brock's like, I got it immediately. Uh, and he gets punched. Uh, yeah, this, and Rusty has the... You know, <laughs> Do we get socked on the lips every time we talk, or just when we make a point? You know, I love I love Rusty's pizzazz. Like, does not put up with shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he's he's been in he's been in worse scrapes than this. He's just smart assing them yeah. like, like they're like they're frogmen or whatever. Um, and yeah. I love I love that because their response to his sarcastic question is to hit him again. Like, oh, so every time, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very very cute. Yeah. Uh, Hank will talk to the counselor, but only uh, well only if he gets a cigarette. It's like no, <laughs> so then he grabs a Twizzler and pretends to start smoking it, uh huh, and lays uh-huh. out the facts, like basically the stuff from last episode, and we get to mm-hmm. see the counselor making notes as this goes. Yeah, so like uh, the, I, I love the pad, you know, adventure, Hank and Dean. Uh, what's already on there is paranoid delusions, Arrested Development, Crybaby, uh, specifically about Dean. But then uh, after the cigarette thing, he writes oral fixation for Hank. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, like <laughs> Hank, again, falling into a character, uh, you know, we're on the run for international assassins. Uh, we don't Let's get out of like, a, it, it, what's that? Let's act like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and if, you know, if we, if we don't get out of here, we're all dead by morning. The counselor had Stockholm syndrome, uh, cause they're messed Very up cute. kids. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, some two, two SWAT guys come in and be like, hey, you got to cut them loose. Uh, no body, no case. You know, and they're like, what the hell? Like, you know, that looked like a, a bloodbath in there. Said, no, the room was totally Martha Stewart. There's nothing in there but a lemony fresh scent. In fact, I can kind of smell it now. And we introduced the cleaner. Uh, one of my favorite one-off characters in the Venture Brothers. It's so good. Uh, this guy used to be OSI, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's yeah. on the OSI like list. Uh-huh. Uh, he's just clean, but with an Elvis voice and bottles of acid. Yep. <laughs> well, pretty very huge uh, Jackson Public energy to this. Yeah, the, the 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 Elvis voice on this Mr. Clean is like so incongruous. I love it. Yeah. Uh, very funny. <laughs> and he's just uh, like always smiling. Like he comes in and he's wearing these, you know, big, you know, big sunglasses. You know, like as they're talking, he sprays them uh with uh with his cleaning fluid, dissolving their faces <laughs> and then uh and then dissolving uh the handcuffs off of Brock and Rusty. Their faces, their arms, yeah. you know, everything. Yeah. There are probably people listening who don't know who Mr. Clean is. Is that possible? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, don't I don't think he's in commercials now still. I suppose he's not He's not in commercials. He's, he's, he's a logo. It's a cleaning mascot uh, for uh, yeah. uh, a family of Procter & Gamble cleaning products. The, the mascot being a very tall, like muscular, bald man with a huge smile. Yes, and a white like it's, eyebrows. It's a really, you know, no cute animal, just... <laughs> just a man. <laughs> It's like in a ripped Michael Stipe. Yeah, and he makes magic erasers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Commercials are done. Uh, we go a bit to the monarch and the henchmen. They're about to zap Helper with a car battery hooked up to like his nipple plates. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dr. and Mrs. the Monarch comes in and stops him. He's like, oh, you poor thing. This goes against the Guild Sentience Conference in 1998. You know, hugs him like, oh, they were so horrible to you. We just want to get you back to your family. Mm-hmm. You know, she's playing good cop. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's revealed. Uh, he does these little pathetic meeps and then uh, prints out the location on a little strip of paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she immediately changes demeanor. You know, she she, she played yeah. him, gives the coordinates 24. Uh, and then uh, uh, 21 is like, oh, that was so hot. Hot cop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, apparently there was a cold open to this episode that was cut. That hmm. was about 21 uh, being hot for Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch. Gotcha. Um, and being, uh, you know, them hanging around in Phantom Loom's mansion some more. Hmm. Um don't know very much about that. Might end up in deleted scenes, but I haven't watched those yet. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, the cleaner drops the Venture Brothers off in an L.A. river canal. And he's like, he's on a new Audi in the glove box, Koshies. Good luck to you, man. <laughs> uh, very weird that that voice comes out. Yeah. It's real good. <laughs> uh, and Brock grabs him. He's like, there's just one little problem. Hank never called you and puts a knife to his throat. And this mm-hmm. is where Molotov's like, no, no, I did. Yeah. Uh, and this is great. I love, because she's dressed like, like Russian club women who i have known dress yeah yeah it's a it's a specific i i I need to uh, i need to look up uh, what it is it is a specific outfit but it is it is Mm -hmm. both like uh like way too casual and loose but also like like intended to be stylish yeah yeah like uh, sweatpants with like juicy on the butt yeah hoodie sweatsuit with no sleeves uh big uh, steel magnolias hair <laughs> yep. red shades <laughs> you know, it's like it's a weird look and like uh brock uh, i think she's in disguise and she's like you know what what this is how i dress and he uh, starts razzing her about it which is real cute yeah it's her uh, uh, it, it's it's her off-duty clothes no it's it's uh it's grace jones's outfit from of you to a kill oh yeah yeah there we go yeah because uh, every, everything if somebody's wearing something and this they're mm-hmm. wearing it from a movie yeah uh i love i love the boys uh here <laughs> like, Hank, like who's that hood rat brock is talking to he can get any shorty he wants <laughs> shut funny. the fuck up hank <laughs> yeah. it's very funny uh, so the cocoon finds him because uh helper gave him the gps or whatever mm-hmm. uh molotov and the cleaner leave the cleaner flips him off you know of as course. he's leaving uh, and, uh, Dr. Mrs. Uh, cringes because the monarch goes, come out, come out wherever you are. He's like, Oh no, I know it's cliche, but trust me, it's extra creepy over the PA. <laughs> uh, and the monarch calls over the communicator watch, uh, doing kind of a hostage video thing with helper, uh, kind of not understanding that rusty doesn't give a shit about helper. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah. that isn't actually leverage. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, 24 turns the camera to night vision mode or, uh, starts operating, you know, and it makes everybody look naked, mm-hmm. you know, so they, they turn it off. At the same time, Tracer calls Brock, says, you know, we need you need to come out from the cold, have us a little powwow. Mm-hmm. And I'll go uh, off first you know, blood on me, pal. 
<laughs> uh, and Brock very smartly grabs Rusty's communicator and talks to them both at the same time. Mm-hmm. Says, we'll do it, but the meeting goes down how I say it goes at the venture compound at dawn. Yeah. Uh, there's a little throwaway joke here where Hank's like, Dawn, we're finally being able to meet our long lost sister. I yeah. thought that was too stupid for, for Hank to say. That um like that's a, dawn is a time. That's a that's a that's a that's a callback. Uh no, the, it's yeah, yeah. to to uh what is it, love bites. Uh-huh. Yeah, but it, it's still stupid. It's like, very I, dumb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, too too stupid for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. that. Um, oh, so uh, we're we're getting into uh, we're we're getting into the the the, the conflict here. Uh, the cocoon mm-hmm. descends in the compound, and you know Brock leads Rusty and the boys uh, out of the hatch on the bottom of it. Like you know, they stowed away. Um, you know, to to, to get the ride there. So I'm like, hey, uh, go 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 to the panic room. Yeah. Uh, the monarch is giving his pre-battle speech. Um, a, hen- a henchman tries to uh, interrupt him, saying, like, hey, the Ventures are leaving. And the monarch shoots him in yeah. the face for interrupting him. Um, Dr. Misses the monarch. is like, hey, this is obviously a trap. And the monarch's like, yeah, I know that, but I'm mm-hmm. setting a trap, a trap of my own. Uh, let me just say that I took the liberty of upgrading his robot with two gigabytes of kablam. <laughs> uh, so poor helper. Poor helper. Uh, this is what's going to cause helper to get the spider, military <laughs> spider bot body. <laughs> He's going to turn into the walking eye. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but helper, uh, he uses his buzzsaw hands to cut himself free. Why he didn't do that before is unclear. Uh, but, yeah. uh, he falls forward revealing that he has a bomb, uh, planted on his back. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so Brock is saying back, you know, he thinks everything's going according to plan. He's switching back and forth between Tracer and the Monarch, leading them to encounter each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the Monarch's like, you know, it doesn't matter. This is a trap. This is rusty fucking venture, not the OS freaking I, yeah. you know, we're going to be fine. Uh, but they run into each other. The mm-hmm. henchmen open fire on the OSI soldiers. The bounce, the darts just bounce off and we get this little fight scene. Yeah. Yeah. All of, uh, the Monarch's, uh, screens, uh, go dark as the OSI returns fire. They're, uh, they're quite outmatched. Uh, and Traster is watching this, uh, you know, says, oh, Brock, you know, <laughs> Brock's evening out the playing field. Uh, Dodo and Cardholder, they conclude, oh, he's obviously gone over to the guild if he's getting this monarch clown to come after us. Um, and this means that Traster is going to want him alive to learn what Brock told them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so split screen of Traster and the monarch giving identical orders. Uh, this is the part that feels like stunty. Yes. And, and not that exciting to me. Mm hmm. Um, it's so weird that the action in the last episode is like legitimately like really good cartoon action. And the action yeah. in this episode is really flat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah. Um, the Monarch prepares the Moppets to prepare his death's head panoply. Uh, <laughs> also something that does like only kind of works for me in this episode. There are parts uh-huh. of that I like, mm-hmm. uh, but it, 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 all the, the action is very stiff now from here on in. Yes. Yeah. Um, we also have Sergeant Pat- hatred's, uh, arc yeah. to, to, res- you know, resolve. Right. Here. You know, so, you know, Hank, uh, they're all, you know, all of them are in the, are in the panic room. Uh, he's saying like, Hey, there's something outside of, uh, outside the panic on the lab there. It's like a skunk ape or something. The uh, developers of the remaster of Sam yeah. Max Save the World. Yeah. I love that. Rusty, R- Rusty tells Hank, Hank, sit down and pretend to be sane. <laughs> this is all too much. I like Dean in this as well. It's yeah. all too much for him. Like he can't feel his arm. Like how old do you have to be to have a heart attack? <laughs> You know, uh, very sad. Yeah, I'm just um, like saying, why can't I just have a normal life? Mm-hmm. Um, Rusty's, I had that dream once too. You know, just very sad. Um, and Sergeant Hatred is the one who who runs up uh, to the window. Uh, Hank lets him in, which, you know, uh, Rusty hides. Right, right. Um, he has you know, behind like a Dean Christmas like, tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, I love the storage panic room. Yeah. Um, and Dean points out like, oh, that's Pop's arch enemy. And Hank you know, correctly says like, I mean, technically on paper, like, yeah. we've seen very little of his, this arch enemy this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, this is Hadrian trying to complete his plan to death by venture. Yes. Uh, he's absolutely drunk. He's, he's on the sauce. He demands that rusty kill him. You know, he's mm-hmm. been trying to kill himself. He can't kill himself. He tried to blow his head off with a shrink ray, but just gave himself a little baby tongue, which is very funny. <laughs> I love that. It sticks it out and wiggles it. And then, like, did he, I, I forget him. I think he another thing. Did he try to hang himself, but his neck was too thick? No, that, I don't think he mentions that. Yeah. During this. I think you're thinking of saying different, but uh, I do like that as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, so outside the OSI and Monarch forces, they, you know, they charge each other. It's just, it's just too big of a battle. Uh, it turns into like, you know, fist fights where like none of the individual yeah. stuff matters. What is fun, 
uh, is that uh, 21 and 24 are sitting in the monarch mobile listening to the battle on their communicators. You're just seeing people die. Yeah. <laughs> that guy is on fire. That I, man is on fire. But you can tell by his <laughs> scream that he's on fire. Yeah. Uh, just eating snacks. Uh-huh. Um, and 21 <laughs> takes a bunch of tortilla chips and, like, dip uh, and starts spreading all over his face saying uh, that's battle damage. Yeah. <laughs> So when they get out, people think that it's like, you'll just look like you cover yourself in snack. Uh-huh. Uh, and their whole plan to sit out the battle is interrupted by helper who starts stealing the car, mm-hmm. uh, gets in the, the front seat. 21 gets out, but 24 can't because he uh, buckled his seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then the last thing that uh, 21 says to his best friend is, why did you yeah. buckle up? Why did you buckle up? I don't know. <laughs> like I, I really like that. Yeah. It's very it's it's such a funny, like well observed little thing to do. Uh-huh. You know, like you're just gonna sit in a car for a while, but you buckle your seatbelt after. Yeah. You know, or just because of instinct. Uh-huh. Just reflex. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. Very cute. Oh man. Uh <laughs> that, that, that's the lesson, everybody. Do not buckle up. Yeah, stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Like nanny state. A little side cat podcast within a podcast. Yeah, this is Nanny yeah. State with Gary and Cole. Uh, what is your what's the thing you hate the most about the Nanny State, Cole? <sighs> um, how they care whether how they act like they care whether I live or die. They just want my taxes, man. Yeah. Who? How dare they? Yeah. You Only know, I decide whether I live or die. Yeah. Click it. You know. Click it and kick it. Yeah. Yeah. Click it and kick it. <laughs> click it and clit it. That's why I say <laughs> clit it. Don't tick it. <laughs> Government. Yep. Get on my face, Uncle Sam. <laughs> I'm very confused about this stance. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody taught me anything. The way that it I'm should gargle be. I'm your bar- balls, Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Trying to make me not vape? I'll suck your dick, Uncle Sam. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> patriotic fellatio aside. Um, <laughs> the, uh, Rusty, this is what you were thinking of. Rusty's trying to strangle him, but he can't get his hands around his neck. Yeah, yeah, uh, trying yeah. to strangle, <laughs> trying to strangle hatred. Uh, and Hank, uh, he opens up the panic room door. He's got his shirt wrapped around his head like a turban. And he's holding an umbrella like a sword. He's he's gonna help Brock. He's he's concerned. Like, <laughs> hey, our, our friend is gonna die. Like, he's he's out there all alone. Yeah, and hatred likes us. Like, this kid's got moxie. This is yeah. the the starting starting of uh, hatred admiring uh, Hank, which is mm-hmm. Mark I like. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, he's like, unlike your father, who's a coward and Rusty's like, Oh, I've been through plenty. Uh, and they start comparing, uh, traumas. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I love this yeah. quite a bit. Uh, it, um, it, hatred punched a guy's head off. Uh, Jonas made R- Rusty kill a man with a house key. <laughs> okay. I want to see that flashback. Yeah. And uh, then- <laughs> hatred wants an entire laboratory retriever or, uh, very good. <laughs> why yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know uh, so hank uh hank gets them back on track you know and hatred says they're all hiding from them to themselves like hatred is a fighter not a lover rusty was one trusty vester runchy rusty runchy runchy venture runchy vocter yeah runchy vocker and uh hank is becoming a man and dean will someday come around <laughs> uh you know they say like we can't go out there we need an army and hank says well uh you know if you let us open our Christmas gifts early, then maybe we have an army referring mm-hmm. to the cover up of the clones from the uh, Scooby-Doo episode. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the clone slugs and we get the, we yeah. get the scene of the, of the clones kind of, you know, marching blindly and unable to speak, uh, to, uh, March of the toys from, uh, babes in Toyland, that little operetta. Yeah. And uh, hatred favorite is... movie of Jackson Publix. Like he's always wanted to do this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a cool scene. Uh, hatred's leading their March. Uh, they're all wearing, um, underwear like stings under, uh, like, like weird little, uh, short shorts from the from Dune, Dune movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because they didn't want to animate and then cover up hundreds of boy dicks. Probably smart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, preteen limp, not <laughs> you know, the best thing. Uh, generally frowned upon. Yeah. Uh, so everything is going according to plan. If they had done nothing, mm-hmm. everything would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. What Brock sees this is happening. Uh, and this is what, you know, this is him choosing family ultimately. Like right. he tries to stop the fighting and turn himself in. Yes. Like he runs on the lawn and the boys do a go team venture without realizing they fucked everything up. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Um, and the piece is broken because the Monarch Mobile uh, tears out uh, and just, just mows through the clone slugs. 
like uh, mm-hmm. just uh, d- d- just runs them down. They're just smears now. Not all of them. Like there's well, there are the rest of them are gonna die elsewise. Well, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Brock runs out. You know, cease fire, cease fire. I give up. You know, he doesn't want to give up the boys' backup plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tracer comes out and he salutes. Um, and the monarch uh, is gonna fuck all this up as well. Yeah. Um, just you know, oblivious to this this peaceful ending mm-hmm. um you know he's being carried out by his henchmen in the death's head panoply armor um we keep saying that like it's a thing yeah you know that people just know what that means <laughs> uh, it's like an iron man suit with blades on it yeah it's a uh, uh specifically it is the same armor as uh the death blossom in the last starfighter is, yes. uh, is what it is but he's shitty iron man he can't actually move under his own steam um yeah. uh, except as a whirling dervish of death as we're going to see yeah. panoply means a collection of things hmm. so yeah he's the death said collection of things yeah uh dr mrs the monarch is like don't do this you've never tested it mm-hmm. you know uh she leaves helper's detonator on the throne uh we will not find out who actually presses this for quite a long time yes um so a henchman activates the death head panoply armor which she cuts off his head immediately mm-hmm. um and it rises in the air just wildly shooting lasers everywhere just killing the clone slug army yep <laughs> so, so starting up the uh the, the the larger battle you know hank says yes. oh you know we, we should be out there you know we should be in the shit fighting with our moist brethren <laughs> <laughs> like moist brother in quite a bit yeah and i also like that rusty saying like hey calm down you only live once which is uh which yeah. is a fun little we well, see he's got like a little like smirk to it i really yeah. like oh you only live once <laughs> like it's, it's it's a really good delivery yeah uh tracer shows up and and reveals that this whole thing was uh kind of a sloppy plot uh you know brock you have a funny way of thanking people for saving you and he's like save me you know, you sent those assassins after me, all those things. Like, that wasn't us. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that wasn't OSI. But all, I'm glad this happened because your work's been getting real sloppy. Yeah. You know, like your mind has been going AWOL. Why don't we, you know, uh, you your reports have been real strange. None of the reports <laughs> mention this clone farm. Yeah. This, you know? this, this atrocity that you've been uh, just kind of sitting on. Uh, yeah. C- c- kind, of, kind of strange, bud. Uh, we're going to need yeah. to get you, uh, uh, you know, get, get you in from the cold, you know, come back, you know, get some, you know, just recuperate. Right. And, yeah. you know, Brock is fed up, you know, like, no, I, I'd actually just rather quit. Yeah. Uh, and the, the ventures are like, oh, that'd be, you're just going to be a private employer, mm-hmm. you know? And he's like, no, 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 no. They're like, I quit. Like he starts walking away from the boys as well. This has been a rough day for him. Yeah. You know, he's lost his hair. He's lost his power symbolically. Um, hatred says like, I could use a job foreshadowing that little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and 24 gets out of the, the monarch mobile and waves. Like he's fine. Yeah. Uh, Brock says like monarch the monarch is on the ground. He's puked from spinning around. I'm taking your fucking car, <laughs> uh, but the car explodes. Yes. Uh, sending 24's head into the waiting arms of a screaming 21. Yeah. Uh, smashing into the credits. Yeah. Uh, and then we get a post credit scene, which explains the mystery in a way that I find deeply unsatisfying. Yeah. And is yeah. not really followed up very strongly. Right. Yeah. So like, if it wasn't the OSI who sent out those assassins, like who, who was the, who was the puppet master behind this that ultimately led to, you know, all of this death and destruction? Well, it was Molotov yeah. and the Blackhearts. And Hunter. You know, uh, who were just eliminating their competition. It was a business plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Blackheart's Elimination Agency is not like a major plot point or anything. Nope. Moving forward. And like, I don't know, it, it's arguably in character for Molotov to just like let a lot of people die and risk a lot of people's lives to eliminate the competition it doesn't yeah. feel in character for Hunter, especially once he starts running Sphinx. Yep. Like Hunter's a true believer. Mm hmm. You know, uh, I, I kind of hate this. Yeah. Like, it, it's one of my least favorite cold closes in the, in the, the series. Mm-hmm. Like it accounts for things, but it doesn't necessarily explain anything very well. Like, especially, you know, like, okay, Hunter is working in like high espionage and stuff like that. So you think, okay, maybe like, maybe this works. Like maybe there are things that we learn about him. No, like this, this is not committed to later on. Like, you know, he is still shown to be like a weirdo, but still incredibly principled about it. Yeah, you know, and it, loyal it, to it, like loyal to people who are loyal to him, you know, and it, it, so. th- this whole plot relied on, you know, 
you know, Hunter taking advantage of of Brock's trust in him, right? Brock came to yeah. him when he figured, okay, I've been burned. And, you know, just like uh, Hunter was the one who gave him the dossiers and set everybody up. He didn't give him the dossiers, but like set him up with what he needed to go around and take care of all this stuff. Right. Yeah. And and later they pay lip service to this. Like in a later episode, Hunter's like, what do you care? Like you just took him out like it was nothing. But a lot of people died just for no reason. Yeah. Like a lot of civilians. And like it just doesn't feel very in line with Hunter. Mm hmm to me like to just be that cavalier like being cavalier about brock and taking advantage of brock's trust with him feels bad Mm -hmm. you know the way we're introduced to hunter is literally him you know him being his father and having to hunt him down or refusing to kill Mm -hmm. hunter you know that relationship is more complicated than that yeah but then also just having that reckless disregard for like innocence yeah is just weird you know it's fucking weird (laughs) and if you're setting up something for season four great Mm -hmm. but all the stuff before the credits is set up for season four. This stuff barely matters. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Really disappointing. Like I, character I like, continuity. I, I like Hunter too much for them to play to put for them to play this fast and loose. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm at, you know, ultimately I'm happy they didn't make him a snake, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it could, you, you, you continue the relationship and he continues being, you know, solid, but like, yeah, no, it just, it, it is, it is a, it is a misstep through and through, I, I think. Yeah. It ends up being this, because of, you know, I forgot how much I love the first half of this, but with the second half, this ends up being one of my least favorite finales, mm-hmm. you know, contrasting with the last finale of the wedding, which I think is pretty joyous. Like, you yeah. know, that does have some weird, like a very extended never ending story parody that doesn't really fit in, <laughs> but like is, is pretty joyous, mm-hmm. like pretty fun and, and gets the action you know, kind of heart ratio correct. Yeah. Uh, this one I feel is a little bit of a stumble. Yeah. Uh, it sets up cool stuff. Like it, it, it is, it, it, it is incredibly important, but uh, you know, uh, it, it could have also been a good, uh, it could have also been a good experience getting it set up too. You know, could have been a good episode yeah. getting into it. Not that it's like a yeah. bad, you know, bad and terrible or anything, but missed opportunities, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's not a death march to watch. It's just, yeah. I also watch this show for the characters. I think yep. it's one, something that separates this from Adult Swim's brethren. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is just, it. whenever they flub on that, you see it because they're usually pretty good at it. Yep. You know? Uh, and that's kind of how I think about this. So um, very excited to go into, you know, we're going to talk about next episode. We're going to talk about the season as a wrap up. We're going to talk about the special features. Mm-hmm. Um, really excited to do that and get into season four personally yeah. for me. So my favorite season of the show. Yeah. Um, as you're hearing this, uh, uh, especially on the early release feed, you have a couple of days to get your responses in. Just go to duckfeed.tv slash contact and uh, hit the orb button. Uh, mm-hmm. And that will uh, uh, send your email to the right place. Uh, uh, restrict it generally to season three here uh, and partic- yes, in particular episodes. Um, you know, uh, we're, we are, we are not looking for, uh, broad reviews of the entire series. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be, you know, if that's something you want, we'll do a wrap up for the the show. Of course. You know, after the movie and stuff. And that would be the time for that if you'd like to do that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, other than that, just, uh, please go to patreon.com slash duck TV. Support us. Mm-hmm. Uh, please give us ratings, reviews on Apple podcast or podcast addict. We'd appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, until next time. Go Go Team team Venture. Venture.